Hey you, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in gardening zone 6B in New England where it's actually tomorrow. You'll see that in a few minutes. Um, but fall is here. Autumn has landed. Look at this tree. I swear the camera does not do it justice, you all. This tree is so freaking pretty. She's turning orange and gold. Ugh. Looks like the rose hips are coming along great. They're gonna be ready to pick in a couple of days. See how nice and dark these got? This one's not bad either. Really, we're looking for this nice dark red color. I'm gonna hang out and wait for Mike to come over so that we can check in on the wine caps that we found yesterday. And while I'm waiting on Mike, you all take a look at yesterday. See you soon. So the wine caps have come up. So how do we pick these? All you want to do is get right down to the base of the mushroom mm -hmm. and you're going to pull it right up. You want the mulch to come with it too and it will. But you can see where it's colonized all the mulch underneath. Oh wow. It's okay. all white. Cool. All mycelium. And you said all the way at the bottom? All the way at the bottom. It'll come right up. Oh yeah. Oh that wasn't even... Yeah that came right up. I just, I practically put my finger under it and then just brought the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're so pretty. Yeah, they're cool mushrooms. What we have are some wine cap mushrooms. Uh, now, these are a little bit past their date. Um, what you want to do is actually pluck them either right after the veil has descended, so this might be a perfect uh, candidate, mm -hmm. um, but you really want to see that veil still attached because when it drops its spore load, uh, it kind of loses its um, loses its flavor, loses its nutritional value. It's gone past its, its, uh, uh, its date. And you can see, if we pull this back here, it's already dropped its spores. All the spores? Not all of them. There's still definitely plenty, plenty more inside of the cap. Uh -huh. But um, you can you can see where they start to plaster spores on other mushrooms. Oh wow! And we saw those on the top. That's right, right there. You and can you those can see dark where, patches are the spores. Yeah, you can see where the gills kind of make a channel for the spores to drop, so they leave a pattern. That's cool. Right. Best thing to do with these mm -hmm. is we're going to continue colonizing the wood chips in this bed. So we're going to rip up the mushrooms and we're gonna toss them right back in okay let's do it all right okay so how are we just willy-nilly doesn't matter i'm um, just you the can... cap right no all of it all of it yeah okay the stem is gonna be a little bit harder to rip it's actually the stems are stringy from top down but look at that healthy mycelium in there wow you can see the spores coming off of my hands and staining the the flesh oh my gosh yeah so and all of these really cool mycelial roots down here. Okay, and we're just gonna toss them in? Just toss them in. Okay. We're just spreading all of the genetic material for the, for the mushroom. Like I, like I said, it. all of mycelium knows what it's doing. Oh my gosh, yeah, my hands are covered in it. Mm -hmm. The spores. So let's see this guy down here. This might be. Okay. Ooh, look at this one. Yeah, so this one might be a good one to eat. Although you can see it's sporing. You see it's showing at the top there. Oh, so this little, this little fringe looking bit mm -hmm. shows that it's dropping spores? Correct. You can see a little bit on the inside of the veil too. Oh, wow. So while it is dropping spores, it's the, the cap is still curled um, over mm -hmm. rather than up and curled up. So it just broke. So it just broke. This one might be a good candidate for trying out for food. This <gasps> one just, Look at just that. ripped. Oh, wow. Okay. And so that's when it's choice to eat? Yep. Okay. These guys are not ready yet. Uh, I mean, you certainly could pick them, uh, but you're not gonna get much out of them. I'd probably wait and check on them tomorrow morning and see how they are. Okay. All right, so these little ones, these are these are bird's nest. Mm -hmm. So that's competing with it, but it doesn't seem to be taking it out. 
and it is everywhere. Okay, so these ones are the the eating ones? Those ones are the eating ones. Okay. And Mostly these because ones... So to, to go over what we talked about before, mm -hmm. the veil just descended, the cap is still curled over, and while there is a presence of some spores, it hasn't started dropping its whole spore load yet. This is the a more ideal mushroom? Yep, it has the veil that just recently detached. You can see it underneath, mm. but some of it's still attached, which means this is perfect to pick. Awesome. So the reason that you want to use a basket when uh -huh. picking mushrooms is so that you are dropping spores as you're walking. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So repopulating and repopulating. Exactly, a little bit of fairy magic. They look so lovely all snuggled in there. I couldn't just take a bite of these? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, no. Okay. Um, reason being is that a lot of wild mushrooms, um, even grown in captivity like these have been, uh, carry nematodes. Ew. Um, which can make you sick if you eat them without proper processing. Those are tiny worms, right? Right, which is why, um, you know, when we ate the chicken of the woods together, we made sure that they were fully cooked before we ate them so they didn't get us sick. We boiled the stuffing out of those. Right, exactly. How it stinks, they have little... I like your, your setup here. Oh, hey, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to look it up and get a good guide? Yes. Okay. This probably isn't a bad one. We've got... Those look like oh. it to me. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that was me. Um, so you can see this is from uh, the University of Connecticut here. Okay. So let's take a look. What do you think? I think it's the same thing. Mm hmm Especially with those... Those gray gills. Gray gills. So yeah, we have gray gills. We had that really dark spore print. We've got a a veil that is um, a little bit, what's the word, frayed, mm -hmm. like we see here. We have those little scales growing at the top, which we see here as well. Mm -hmm. Gills are indeed connected to the stape. Which, is the, which part is the stape? Or stipe, excuse me. So the stipe it refers to the to the stem here. Oh, okay. So where the gills attach to the stipe, you can see that there is a concurrent attachment. Okay, so now we're on another page here. We are. We don't want to check just check one source. We want to make sure we are as informed as possible when making decisions to put anything we find in the wild or even grow such as this in our mouths. Good call. There is a kind of a bulb at the bottom here, mm -hmm. um, but there is no egg or membranous sac that the mushroom popped out of. It's just a little bit more bulbous, and the, the fact that it is bulbous can sometimes be mistaken for uh, such as like a stinkhorn or an amanita egg. When we talk about an egg, we don't mean like an egg. egg. Oh, we're talking about like aliens egg thing that splits open and something comes up from the center. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Are you, are you messing with me? Cause no, there was here. a loose telephone pole thing. Oh my God. Eggs. Oh. They, they come from a membranous sac. Gross. That's a the great way to, so the Amanita and the Stinkhorn both do this. I would see a definition if it had come out of an egg, right? Correct. You'd okay. see some sort of a shell or membrane that it came from. Um, this is just all one piece. So you're going to cook these? Sure. Yeah. Uh, after we cut it open and just uh, completely verify our identification, we're going to split it in two and then we're going to take a look on the inside to make sure that our gills are actually attached first things first sorry i'm going to get some mulch on here that's okay we're gonna the part that smells like home depot can stay that. behind yeah that's probably the one uh the um part of the system, to be honest gills are indeed attached they're gorgeous yeah they are kind of nice now, um, I have heard that the stems are a little bit tough, um, but we're still going to try them out. Okay. I don't know what the best way to, to eat these are yet, so we're just going to do them in some butter and salt. Sounds good to me. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to 
add our lovely sliced mush uh, mushrooms uh -huh. into the butter. Now we are using the stems too, even though they're a little bit woody because this is the first time we're eating them and we want to try them out. All right, they smell good already. And now we are going to get some salt in there. Get the liquid out? To get the liquid out, yep. When the mushrooms are expressing the liquids as right now, um, this is like perfect to uh, throw into a soup. Oh, okay. So you want all that mushroom liquid to get into your soup and also just when the mushrooms have gotten a little bit plump, mm -hmm. because you don't need caramelized mushrooms in your in your soup. That's, right. Caramelized mushrooms go better than other things, but you want you want that plump meaty mushroom in a soup. Okay, so our, what are we doing with this? Are we putting this into the, the sauce? Are we keeping it on its own so we can taste it? What's... We are going to try them by themselves first, and then we'll figure out afterwards if we want to put them in anything else. All right, so what's it like? So it's juicy, um, although that might be attributed to how much butter we have in here. We do have a lot of butter in there. <laughs> um, but it's earthy, it's a little nutty. Um, and definitely tasty. They look great. Oh yeah, we're definitely we're definitely gonna use the rest of the butter in this pan for the other veggies. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> You are not funny. It's delicious. <laughs> mm. It's good? They're really good. I don't know if they kill you that fast. Mm. Very good. So this is dinner. It's kind of a sausage gravy and some rice and the mushrooms and some beans. And then Liberty said... It's basically deconstructed green bean casserole. It's my... Because you, you're going to get her camera. Did you say funnel spider? Yeah. Oh, I don't see her. Where nope, is she? she got she got shy because you pulled out the camera. Oh, that's okay. She's got a really good nest, though. Got a nice little hammock. Yeah, nice digs, sweetie. Nice digs. There she is. Where is she? She's in that hole? She is. That's a really good funnel. She is a good funnel. All right, you, so we're gonna, going in. Are you going to want to grab these? Are they ready? Oh, yeah. All right, let me get a picture. These guys are ready. Oh, it's so exciting. I did not bring a basket, but that's okay too, right? That's fine. Okay. It was a good club. Oh, go for it. Uh, there we go. Oh, that lifted magnificently. Oh, yeah. We'll come up together. <sighs> See, we've got no descended veils, just breaking right there. These will be perfect. Oh my goodness. Look at okay. all that fuzzy mycelium down there. Wow, let me get in close. Ooh. Ooh. It looks like a meringue on part of it. You want to touch it? I do want to touch it. Touch it. Oh, it's soft. Soft Very and, nice and a soft. little spongy. Mm -hmm. oh. Very fuzzy. I love mycelium. It's so cool. Still smells like Home Depot. No, oh, it's a little bit better. At least to me. It was the bottom that smelled like Home Depot. Yeah, a little bit. I legitimately think it's the bird's nest that smells like that. Okay. The tops are nice. They don't really have much of a smell. But they are pretty mushrooms. So we are, we're out here now at the bluet patch mm -hmm. that we planted and we're seeing some pins, y'all. We're seeing some pins we are. and Mike was optimistic. I'm not sure because I've never, I've never grown bluet mushrooms, especially not outside or inside. Um, I've never done them either. So be an experiment for the both of us. Oh my God. I hope we see them like for generations and generations. Oh, I would imagine so. Once the mycelium's there, the fruiting bodies will come up um, every year. Um, but I would imagine, so wine caps are a quick growing mushroom. They're also quick degrading mushroom. I have no idea about bluets, how quickly they grow or how long they'll last. Do you think these will last in the fridge overnight? These? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Probably. Oh. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, well, we'll find, we're going to find out. Let's find out, yeah. So let's take a look at these pins, these beautiful, beautiful pins. Look at these, y'all. 
we are optimistic, cautiously optimistic that in among the bird's nests here, we've also got bluet pins. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we played with all things goblin-like um, and brought in, are bringing in these beautiful wine caps that we planted back in late spring. Um, this is really cool. Thank you so much. Mushrooms are awesome. Everybody should, everybody should have a relationship with mushrooms. I do love a mushroom. And that's okay <laughs> if you don't like mushrooms, mushrooms love you. They'll love you to death. Mm -hmm. They'll love you to literal pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll catch you up soon. Take care. earlier and the powdered sugar from the Pacelles is all over oh. <laughs> <laughs> I we're, we're gonna be okay I, I see you spotless I, I see you mm. spotless and in success mm -hmm. no that's why you're wearing glasses <laughs> <laughs> it's inner vision man <laughs> if you say so yeah nature is creepy nature is very creepy